New Zealand is a hunter's paradise from the landscape, which is beautiful, to the, the animals there are awesome. Alright, made it to Sydney Airport. Um, so I've been on a plane about 20 over the last 22 hours. And um, fortunately on this flight, nobody had their seat reclined two inches during landing. So we were able to get her on the ground safely. Now I gotta sit here for an hour and then three or four hour flight to Queenstown. So today I'm gonna to tour a, I'm on a wine tour. So we're gonna to tour four different um, vineyards, do some tasting. Um, and they say New Zealand has some of the best wine in the world. But. If you know you like a drier white wine, go for high alcohol content. Finally made it to camp and we're shooting our guns. Do this all the time. Make sure everybody knows how to shoot. And then Gary just gave us a quick tour of some stags they've gotten in the past. And that is a giant. Quick tour of my room. Every room had their own bathroom. There's a ride up the mountain. Big lodge, had lots of guest rooms. Kitchen on the left right there, laundry on the right. They did our laundry every day. And this dining room was pretty cool. Ate all of our meals in here, fully stocked bar, hung out at night, watched some movies. First day here and we're already uh, going out after it. Uh, the weather was nice and we have to take advantage of it. You never know what's gonna happen and you cannot fly a helicopter in the fog. Well, you can, uh, you don't want to. Anyway, this uh, first time on a helicopter, it was unbelievable. Harvey has been flying for over 40 years and he can land that thing on a dime. Um, it was really cool going through mountains. If you can picture being on a roller coaster, but you don't know which direction it's gonna go. It was crazy, a lot of fun. We could walk, but it would take a long time. And there's just some places on the mountain you just can't get to. So Harvey drops us off about halfway up the mountain. He's out of here. Now me and Will are gonna get out the binoculars and start finding a car to go after. So basically what we're doing is um, the helicopter dropped us off about halfway up the mountain and we saw some tar up top. We're gonna kind of get, let them chill a little bit because they saw us. Obviously they didn't miss the helicopter. So um, we're gonna let them chill, get comfortable and then we're gonna go up there after them. I got my tar down and these are really cool animals they're in the goat family they are originally from India and Nepal and they were uh, brought over here in uh, 1904 to attract international hunters but they're really cool animals you don't see them very often See the helicopter up there in the distance hauling somebody back. Now Harvey's coming in hot to pick us up. Today we're going up for chamois, and chamois are originally from 
the mountains in Europe. And these chamois were brought over in 1907. They were a gift from the Emperor of Austria and they traded for some rare birds and lizards. So that's how the chamois got here and now there's a bunch of them. They've reproduced and they just thrive. So what we're doing is just flying around the mountaintops, in and around the mountains, up and down, it was crazy. But we're trying to find a chamois that we can um, get to. And then also once it's down, we gotta be able to get it out of there. So when we spot one, Harvey needs to be able to find a, a, a area just big enough for us to get out. And then he'll take off, get out of there. And then our job is get the animal down and then Harvey's gonna come back. Shami is down, Harvey dropped off Will. Now Will's gonna go down and hook it up to a rope and then that'll get hooked onto the helicopter and we'll just haul it out of here. Gotta be real careful on these mountains. It's a lot steeper than it looked. Part two of this trip, I had another hunter in the helicopter with me and he's actually going after a tar. So same program, fly around, look for tar. You can see the big guy in the middle there, big dark one sticks out. And again, we had trouble with the tar because you gotta be able to get out of the helicopter and gotta be able to make a shot. Here's the other hunter. Getting out, following instructions, don't move. So, Tar's down, Will's doing his thing. And there's Will almost sliding to his death. Good save, Will. So this was after they got the animal and got back in. There was no place to take a photo. And when you got scenery like this, you gotta take a photo. So we just moved to a little area where we could land and get out and take some photos. And then Harvey is gonna come back up. The wife of the hunter that was up there with me got this video of us coming back in. And he wasn't originally gonna go do the helicopter hunt, but him and his wife, after seeing how excited everybody was and how much fun it was doing this, they had a little discussion and she was like, you have to do this. So he did, he loved it, and he got a beautiful tar. Now we're going after Red Stag. Red stag have the largest antlers in relation to their body of any other animal. Just massive racks on these things. They're found mainly in Europe and Asia, and they were brought here from England in the late 1800s. So we're just up here glassing for stag. Beautiful country, you can see a long way. Haven't seen any. This is a monster. So we've been walking around for hours. Didn't see nothing. And Will said that these things, they stay hidden. They'll let you walk right by them. And he was way the hell over there. We must've walked by him. And I was 170 yards away. I was sitting tight. Will wanted to go check out a spot. So he walked over there and jumped him. And this thing started running. He starts yelling, Joe, 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 look, he's coming to your left. So I started running towards Will and then I saw him. This was where my stag was. He was running 
this way. I was up there. I couldn't see him because this is a valley. You can't tell in the camera, but sometimes you need a little luck. But you also make your own luck. Um, he was running down this valley. I couldn't see him until he got up there. That's where I shot him. But this little fence here, we're, this is a sheep. Um, there's sheep here. So that fence is to keep the sheep in. The fence is like four feet high. That stag could have hopped that fence like nothing, disappeared into there. I would have never had a chance. But he stayed down in here, came up there, he stopped. Hey, it's fallow deer hunting day. And we're using side by sides to cover some ground here. There's a view from the spotting scope. But we're just gonna drive around, glassing, try and find something. Once we find something we want, then we gotta stock it on foot. You can't drive up in a side by side, they'll blast out of there, so. Get in there on foot, get close enough to take a shot. We're going to get my fallow. We were right up there. He was 280. He's up there somewhere. We gotta do some hiking, but. So we're going to retrieve my fallow and get some more tar. Mr. Fallow Deer. Nice one. These are split, which is kind of different. Nice wide paddles, good points, good brows. Nice white color, I love them. So he pretty much dropped right here. And I'm shot over there, 280. Fallow deer also from Europe and Asia. And these ones were brought over from England and Scotland in the late 1800s. Now it's time to do a little bit of bird hunting right next to the ocean. The sea was angry that day. What show is that from? Later that night, we hunted wallaby. And wallaby look like little kangaroos. They're a huge nuisance. The Kiwis want them all gone. They destroy the landscape, eat everything. So we drive around on the side by side with the spotlight and they don't freeze in the spotlight. So you gotta be quick, but it was a lot of fun. First time I ever hunted anything at night. And we're uh, fortunate that uh, we each got a few and they were actually delicious eating. <laughs> Day two of bird hunting. We've got black swans here. They're really cool. We just like our swans, but they're black. Big, long neck. Anyway. This was a lot of fun. We sat here on uh, the grass, just kind of hiding. The guides are on the other side of the water, flushing the birds. And they came flying over us, came flying in front of us, came every direction. It was fun. So there's the ocean. That's where we were swan, swan hunting. We were right on that, we were spread out on that uh, chunk of grass up there. Last night here, and that is our host Adam presenting Gary with a plaque. End of a hunt is always bittersweet. Unbelievable time, but it's great to get home. Scored more than 125 inches. Please stay standing. Oh. Oh. So that's Gary and his family. Very hardworking family. And the rest of the staff. The guides, kitchen staff, these people worked nonstop the entire time we were there. First class accommodations, unbelievable food. 
That's a good group right there. That's my stag. That's my fallow. This was a great group. One of the best things about lodge-based hunts is hanging out with other hunters. And from my experience, 99% of hunters are truly awesome people. This was not the most difficult hunt I've ever done, but it was by far one of the funnest. Just nonstop action, adventure, beautiful country, beautiful animals, great people, great food, awesome experience all around. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. I like making them and we'll see you next time.